Hello my friends, this is Alien Contactee, Linol Anderson here with you guys with a brand new YouTube BitShoot video. And today, we're going so far down that rabbit hole, and I know I always say this, but this time it's legit. It's literally going to blow your mind, okay? Because the stuff we're covering is some deep stuff. We're going to be revealing a reptilian secret, a demiurge secret, an Anunnaki secret about the coming race that's right uh there's a big operation right now to change the human race uh to change our dna and turn us into another kind of human they've been changing our dna through uh gene therapies with the things that they want you to get and other nanotechnologies that have been being put in the food supply and the air we breathe just for example so that's another way they are uh, starting to change who we are. And I'm going to be revealing exactly what's happening. We're also going to be going into uh, the nature of our reality of the humans we are right now. And who we were in the past and how this all connects together. Reality is not what it seems. And uh, this might spook you out, this video, just letting you guys know. So let's just get right into it. Of course, just going to encourage you guys to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy today's video. And also hit the like button. Helps me out with the algorithms. And just a heads up, we're going to be talking about some sensitive topics in today's video that deal with race. Okay? And uh, I don't want any to be offended or anything like that. I just want to make it very clear. I am totally against the racism. And end of the day... We all belong to that one God consciousness that exists. We are all one, okay? And we all have our beautiful, unique gifts and abilities and personalities and everything. We are all special in our own way. But with that being said, we must explore uh, within this simulation what these avatars really are. And there are differences in these avatars. And it, we've been lied to about that. And it has everything to do with what's happening now. So, no, no need to get offended. We've been brainwashed and programmed to get offended because it's all part of this loose harvesting uh, situation we found ourselves in. So don't ever get offended with the things that I'm going to say here because there's nothing offensive about it. This is just reality, okay? So, what it comes down to is this realm, okay, is a matrix simulation. It is. And in this simulation, uh, it's pretty much a war simulation. Uh, based on what's happening outside the simulation between multiple different species of interdimensional aliens, you could call them. And yes, they're higher dimensional beings, extraterrestrials, whatever you want to call them. And there's this big cosmic war, cosmic drama that's happening outside the simulation. And they've seemed to make this simulation here uh, to carry out some of these wars and also to ultimately harvest our low vibrational energy. So, when it comes to race, have you ever wondered, you know, there's white people, black people, Asians, Indians, you know, what's the differences? Well, the mainstream people want to make you believe that, oh, they were born in a different part of the world, so that's why they're different, but that couldn't be any further from the truth. So, what is this situation? Well, it comes down to different DNA that we have from these different Anunnaki beings. Okay, Anunnaki is a general term, which means those from the heaven who came to earth. So it's those who are from outside the simulation who came here. There's multiple different kinds. So I'm going to show you a quick video from Billy Carson, who has some interesting things to say about race. Take a look. Could race be a result of a, a particular gene from the people that ruled over a region of us on the planet? And here's what I found out. Scientists, geneticists discovered that there's a 2% variance in genes between races. In other words, what makes me a person that's dark skinned with more melanin in my skin than you who's more fair skin with slightly less melanin in your skin is not because my ancestors were in the Sahara Desert working it's in the desert underneath the hot sun all day. And that's what they teach you in school. The yeah. reason why my 
my skin is this way is because I'm genetically branded. And so are you. You're genetically branded. And so are the indigenous peoples of all the other continents on the planet. We're genetically branded by why? The person who ruled over us gave us a brand. Just like they brand a cow. Say, oh, that's Farmer Jim's cow. Don't touch him. We got the, you see the brand right there? Well, when these people spread out around the planet to rule over different regions of the planet, they genetically branded the people they ruled over to resemble them. They said that a 2% variance would take multi millions of years to happen in natural evolution and yet it only happened in 200,000 years. It tells us something interesting that this is an artificial mutation that was done on purpose to create a specific group or specific races or groups of people that resemble let us make man in our image if you know what I mean. That's right. There you go, my friends. So that's coming from Billy Carson himself, you know, and he, he knows a lot about that specific topic, and I respect what he has to say there. It's very true, okay? Uh, different kinds of humans, we've been branded, okay, by different Anunnaki beings. So, for example, you know, the white folks, they, they come from a mixture of the Palladians, okay? And maybe there's some other DNA uh, than... I believe the Middle Eastern people, I've been able to find out they're the Syrians, okay? When it comes to other races, I'm not quite sure. There's many different groups at play, whether Andromedans, Blue Avians, Octurians. Uh, every race has a different group of being, Anunnaki being, but all races are mixed with reptilian DNA, okay? Because the reptilian Dracos play a vital role in this matrix. We all have a reptilian brain complex. And that's one thing we all share in common. Okay? Now, eugenics uh, plays a huge role in everything that's happening here. And, and you know, I, I also find it very interesting to note uh, this whole concept of as above, so below. You know, the microcosm and the macrocosm. Uh, what happens... On the outside of the simulation with this cosmic war is taking place here because you see throughout history we've had uh, this f complex of racism and hatred and genocides between different groups of humans, right? All throughout history you look back there's been genocides of entire races of humans and like I said this is the microcosm and it's really a war. And showing what's happening on the outside of the simulation, the war between different alien species, and now it's being played out here. It's crazy stuff. So one example of this is, uh, let's go back to the 1930s area there within Germany with the man with the funny mustache there, okay? I can't say his name on YouTube because, you know, you get kicked right off YouTube for mentioning him. But you know who I'm talking about, right? And what was that whole situation up to? Remember, they were trying to... Uh, you know, create a super race of uh, uh, white folks with the, the blonde hair, blue eyes, right? They're calling it the Aryans or whatever. They wanted the super soldiers, okay? Well, what was happening there is uh, that man was in contact with certain beings and that whole regime, and it happened to be a rogue group of Palladians. That's right. A lot of people like to think the Palladians are all good and benevolent but the truth of the matter is there's good ones and bad ones and there is a faction of bad Palladians here on earth right now who are underground who've had a big role in everything uh, i got a video to show you about that take a look the Pleiadians have went through their own similar evolution their evolution started a million years ago so a million years ago they were struggling with a lot of the same issues that we have here on Earth. Maybe not quite to the extreme that we see here on Earth. So the Pleiades is a star cluster and there's quite a, quite a few different stars and each of these stars have their own civilization, their own culture. Um, so under the umbrella of the Pleiadian, you know, unification. But, but there was also a split in the Pleiades where I think the Pleiadians, because they were trying to heal from their the wounds of their ancestors. They're, you know, they're, most of their ancestors were, you know, Lyran refugees. And so they, they dealt with uh, trauma signatures within their own genetics and they became ultra focused on the light and what was, didn't know, know how to integrate the darkness within them, which created the split of, you know, your positive Pleiadians and your more rogue Pleiadians. So a lot of people have this misconception that Pleiadians are all good. Not necessarily. They may look beautiful, but they're not all good. You know, I mean, there's some, some, some rogue ones. And 
Some of the rogue Pleiadians ended up joining forces with Orion. That's a whole other story. So there was this split, and then they had to find their way back towards integration, which is kind of what we're seeing here on Earth right now. There you go, my friends. So that rogue group, I believe, is co referred to as the Elderberians. Okay. Uh, they could be the same as the Nordics that you hear about or the tall whites, okay? But what it comes down to is they are a negative faction of the Pleiadians who fell down here. And they're in cahoots with the Reptilians and all the other fallen Anunnaki races. Uh, they've pretty much all worked together to create this scenario. But there is even conflicts between all these groups here in this realm as well. Uh, and of course they come from the Pleiades, uh, which... A lot of people say, oh, space is fake and everything, but never forget, it's just, it just, it is not what you think. These planets and stuff, it's not what you think they are. They are portals, stargates, okay? They're not physically coming in here in spaceships, they're coming through portals that come out of the firmament or the dome, okay? That's just the nature of our reality. So, pretty much what happened back then is they were trying to create this uh, super race, right? And, uh... That is a eugenics operation. It's much bigger than what you think it is. It's, much, it's part of this big cosmic war that's playing out. But even that, I believe, was a psychological operation. Okay? Because uh, now, if you look at what's going on now, uh, it looks like the very same super race they are trying to form is now being wiped out. That's right. There is an attack among... The European white folks uh, right now uh, you can see European countries are uh, due to the mass migration uh, the populations are decreasing this is all by design and the crazy thing is and I'm going to show you evidence of this that uh, from hundreds of years ago this was all prophesied by some people and these same people also prophesied the coming race. That's right. There's a change in the races happening here. Major changes in our simulation. Okay? That's right. It's all been prophesied by people such as Helena Blavlatsky, an occultist from the 1800s who had contact with these beings. Okay? With these Anunnaki beings. And also prophesied by guys like Alester Crowley, who was in direct communication with negative entities as well, but still, they gave accurate information for what is coming, okay? And uh, the agenda that's unfolding right now. So we're going to look into that, but before we do, I just want to give a huge shout out to our sponsors down at Oweli, uh and their product, the Liver Detox. My friends, it's so vital that we be detoxing in these times. Because as I mentioned earlier, we are being bombarded with all this nanotech and other poisons in the food supply. So we got to be detoxing. And the liver is so important because that is our main detox fire. So if our liver isn't detox, then we won't be detoxing this crap. So definitely check out Oweli's Liver Detox, okay? And, you, and there is a link down below for that and also a discount code that you could use to get 15% off and free shipping and while you're at it you may as well do a colon cleanse too, flush out those parasites and all that nanotech and all that stuff that's been piling up so it's good to do liver detox and a colon cleanse links are down below and now let's get back to the video so I want to make it clear. We're going to start talking about Helena Blavlatsky and Alester Crowley and what they said about the future race that's coming and uh, also about the past races that we've had. And I know a lot of people hear this and they'll say, Helena Blavlatsky, Alester Crowley, they're satanic, dark, dark occultists. I, I don't want to hear nothing to do with them. Well, let's just put it this way, okay? I do believe Helena was in contact with many negative beings, okay? Uh, and I obviously, when it comes to Crowley, I know he was a pretty evil dude as well, channeling dark entities. He was known to call upon demons and whatnot. But with that being said, uh, do you watch video clips of Klaus Schwab and Bill Gates saying the crap they do? That's right. Everybody does. Everybody in the truth community who's so scared of these occultists, they'll sit there and listen to Bill Gates and Klaus Schwab, though. Those are demons channeling demonic messages. So... Why would you watch them but not listen to what these people have to say? 
Okay? It's the same thing. Okay? It's all demonic fallen entities, but the thing is, they always tell you what they're going to do before they do it. And they always give us snippets of truth about this reality. So for me, I love to research what they had to say, because it's the same thing as listening to what Bill Gates is telling you. It's vital that we understand the enemy's game plan, because they always tell you straight up exactly what's happening. So listen to this information with an open mind. So Helena Blavlatsky uh, wrote a book in the late 1800s, I think 1888, called The Secret Doctrine. And she laid out the truth of our reality and uh, the previous races, okay? And this book actually inspired that guy uh, back in the Germany with the funny mustache. Uh, they actually read this book, and it actually led them to a lot of the things they did. That's how intense this book is about this whole situation unfolding. But let's take a look at what she had to say about the seven root races. That's right, there are seven root races on Earth, five of which have come, and now we're entering the sixth root race, and then there's a seventh root race. What's that all about? Those are the future races, my friends. Let's see what Helena had to say. I got some videos for you guys. Check it out. The mystery of our human civilization goes back much farther than we can imagine. There are seven root races or evolutionary cycles through which humanity evolves. Each root race is divided into seven minor cycles called sub-races, which are again subdivided into seven branch or family races. These subdivisions are related to the modern concept of races and ethnicities. It must be stressed that the sub-races refer to cultural qualities and not to the level of evolution of the soul. They are different evolutionary stages that humanity as a whole goes through successively. The same individuals that compose the current humanity have been reborn in all the previous root races. The root races are stages in human evolution in the esoteric cosmology of theosophist Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, as described in her book, The Secret Doctrine, in the year 1888. These races existed mainly on now lost continents. According to Blavatsky's writings, there will be seven root races assembled on Earth. Each root race is divided into seven sub races. Only five root races have appeared so far. The sixth root race is expected to emerge in the 28th century. We are presently at the fifth stage, referred to as the Aryans. The word Aryans means noble in Sanskrit. There have been many Earth civilizations, of which we know nothing. These races evolved from ether reality to materiality. So every living organic species of animals and vegetation changes with every new root race. The Polarian root race, according to theosophical teachings, represents one of the seven stages in the evolution of humanity. The Polarians are considered the first of these stages and is believed to have existed during a very early period of Earth's history. It is described as ethereal and non-physical, more like spiritual beings than physical humans. The Polarians are thought to have lived in a polar region, hence the name, and were asexual reproducing beings. As they evolved, they eventually divided into two sexes, which marked the transition to the next root race, the Hyperboreans. The second root race is called Hyperborean, considered a continuation of the first and was semi-astrial. Toward its end, it developed the rudimentary beginnings of bones and organs, hair and skin. Although still more or less void of form, it began to show the first outlines of the later human form. However, toward its end, its bodies passed through many curious part animal forms. Hyperborean included what is now northern Canada, Greenland, Iceland, Scandinavia and northern Russia. The climate was tropical because Earth had not yet developed its axial tilt. They reproduced by budding. The third root race, the Lemurian, lived in Lemuria. Lemuria existed in a large part of what is now the Indian Ocean. Lemuria sank gradually and was eventually destroyed by increasing erupting volcanoes. 
The Lemurian root race began 34.5 million years ago in the middle of what was then believed to be the Jurassic area. The people of Lemuria coexisted with the dinosaurs. As Lemuria was slowly submerged due to volcanic eruptions, the Lemurians colonized the areas surrounding Lemuria, namely Africa, Southern India, and the East Indies. The fourth root race was the Atlantean. Their knowledge was confined wholly to the world of the senses. The difference were not only the external appearances, but also to their spiritual faculties. Their knowledge, their technical arts, their entire civilization differed from what we see today. The Atlanteans were the first to develop organized warfare, and it is said the military even deployed air battleships that contained 50 to 100 fighting men. The last days of Atlantis were both frightening and apocalyptic. Their beautiful cities were destroyed by their atomic wars. The large continent of Atlantis is said to have first divided and then broken later on into seven peninsulas and islands. When the main part of Atlantis began to sink, Atlantis settlers migrated to the new lands, which were rising to the east, west, and south. Blavatsky argued that humanity now belongs to a fifth root race called the Aryans. Souls began incarnating in Atlantean bodies a million years ago. The ongoing evolution of the Aryan race has been divinely guided by what theosophists call the Lord of the World. No matter how much culture there is, however, many generations of training and civilization, some humans could not be raised to the same intellectual level. Some actually lack the divine spark, and they are the only inferior race on the earth. Most of us are greenhouses, plants, artificially activated in nature with a spark within us. And fortunately, thanks to the wise adjustments of nature working in that direction, the ones without the spark are rapidly perishing. That's right, my friends. So there you go. Very interesting stuff, wouldn't you say? Uh, it started off with the Polarians. That means we started off in spirit form in the fourth dimension, I do believe. And what it appears with each root race, the Hyperboreans, Lemurians, they kept on trying to find avatars. It was like the beginning of the creation. They wanted to find the ideal avatar uh, so they could harvest our energy, pretty much, you could say and carry out these wars okay and it led to all the different races that we see now up until where we are today but as you could see uh the sixth root race that she prophesied uh that is starting to become a reality right now it's very interesting because helena talked about this sixth root race as i did some research there was a quote of her saying that the Europeans and the Americans are going to gradually be eliminated uh, as the sixth root race uh, begins. That That's right, they are going to be eliminated. And it's going to be more so the darker races that are going to take over. And we see, like I said before, uh, Western countries starting to be uh, taken, all these refugees, whether it be from Africa, Asia, Middle East, right? So we could already see that process of the white class becoming the minority. So she talked about this back in the 1800s. But another thing she talked about was how the sixth root race would start to merge with becoming male and female. And we are eventually, our avatars are going to change to the point we are androgynous and have, you know, pretty much both going on there. And we're going to merge with male and female. Well, isn't it interesting what we see in the world happening right now with the whole LGT, you know, the rainbow stuff, that whole movement. And then we got the non-binary uh, situation happening. People saying they're non-binary, they're not a man or a female. And this has just exploded, right? Uh, it's part of the agenda to get people ready for this change. Uh, because we see that starting to happen. It also said that this was going, to, uh, people were going to start becoming more ethereal, be, be, like moving up to higher dimension. Well, we see that right now. There's major earth changes. And as I told you before, humanity's in the process of going from the third dimension into the fourth dimension. 
as we speak. Okay, and I just want to make it very clear. I don't agree with Helena Blavatsky's her dates and times. Okay, I, she's saying these things are taking millions of years. I think it's happened a lot sooner than that. And I think this transition from the third dimension to the fourth dimension is going to happen pretty quickly. And then we're before you know it, we're going to be at that seventh root race. But as you can see, all these things are, are beginning to take place that she was talking about. I also do believe she spoke about how uh, we would be producing differently since these changes are going to be happening and we are, we're no longer going to be producing like how we do now with the man and a woman having a baby. Uh, it's going to be different. Uh, children will be being birthed in pods, okay? And it's interesting because that is already starting to manifest in our reality. Take a look at this video. <laughs> Introducing Ectolife, the world's first artificial womb facility, powered entirely by renewable energy. Ectolife allows infertile couple to conceive a baby and become the true biological parents of their own offspring. It's a perfect solution for women who had their uterus surgically removed due to cancer or other complications. With Ectolife, premature births and C-sections will be a thing of the past. Ectolife is designed to help countries that are suffering from severe population decline, including Japan, Bulgaria, South Korea, and many others. The facility features 75 highly equipped labs. Each state-of-the-art lab can accommodate up to 400 growth pods or artificial wombs. Every pod is designed to replicate the exact conditions that exist inside the mother's uterus. A single building can incubate up to 30,000 lab-grown babies per year. Ectolife allows your baby to develop in an infection-free environment. The pods are made of materials that prevent germs from sticking to their surfaces. Every growth pod features sensors that can monitor your baby's vital signs, including heartbeat, temperature, blood pressure, breathing rate, and oxygen saturation. The artificial intelligence-based system also monitors the physical features of your baby and reports any potential genetic abnormalities. The pods are equipped with a screen that displays real-time data on the developmental progress of your baby. These data are sent directly to your phone so you can track your baby's health from the comfort of your zone. There you have it, my friends. And in case you didn't know, they're also saying by 2045 that uh, men's sperm count will be down to zero. Take a look. That's right. So, man, women, procreating, having babies, thing of the past. From now on, you're going to be born in a tube, pretty much, or in a little pod. That's the future, and Helena talked all about that in the 1800s, okay? So, she was definitely channeling these beings, telling her this information, and uh, it's spot on, for the most part, what's happening. And you see, she also mentioned how this would all start to take place when the world was under a one world government okay a one world government she said that so that is probably once all these cataclysms happen with the nibiru event and the world is under a one world order I'm not sure exactly how that's going to go or the progression of it all but there's going to come a point under the one world order where this is going to be the reality because I do believe the Miro event and all that is going to change uh, change this world greatly and the atmosphere of this world. And I believe it's going to be shifting us closer to that astral fourth dimension. We already feel the effects. Those of us sensitive to energy are already feeling uh, the world going to a diff another dimension. Plus, they're opening up gateways with CERN and all that technology. But another thing is uh, China. Okay, China plays a big role in this, my friends. And it's going to go into what's happening with the seventh root race, okay? So what it comes down to is as as of right now, China has 
it's pretty much the blueprint for the NWO, okay? Uh, they already have the uh, digital ID, social credit system. They have all the AI technology implemented, and that is the blueprint for the world. They want to bring that to the rest of the world. Meanwhile, we see China buying up all the farmland in the United States, Canada, and uh, European countries, okay? Also, there's evidence to show millions of military age fighting men from China are starting to migrate here and are being housed in housing complexes. And what they're saying, and I, I'm going to be making a video on this at a later time to show you facts and evidence of all this stuff, but what they're saying is there's going to be an invasion of China, and China is pretty much going to be the next world power, okay? And uh, I believe whenever this cyber event happens, it's very possible once it's all over with this big event, there's going to be Chinese military on the streets. And ultimately, China is meant to take over the world. And this goes hand in hand with what I was talking to you guys about uh, the elimination of the culture and the people that we have in Western countries now. And I think the blueprint for the world is meant to be a mostly uh, Asian uh, society that's meant to be left when this is all said and done with. And how do I know that? comes down to leaked documents from the Committee of 300, okay, which is an NWO organization. There's this man who wrote this book back in the 90s, uh, right here. That's right, and he had some, claimed to have some leaked information from one of these Committee of the 300 members, and this is what he had to say. Check it out. The population of Canada, Western Europe, and the United States will be disseminated more rapidly than on other continents until the world's population reaches a manageable level of 1 billion, of which 500 million will consist of Chinese and Japanese races, selected because they are people who have been regimented for centuries and who are accustomed to obeying authority without question. There you go. So this is leaked documents uh, coming out from these powers that be, that they want the world to mostly be uh, Japanese and Chinese people. And the rest, they want depopulated, they want gone. Okay? Well, it's interesting. So we have all this stuff changing, okay? Uh, going to higher vibration. We got this DNA editing programs with that thing they wanted you to get, the nanotechnology, humans aren't being able to birth anymore, we're changing, uh, they want us genderless, all this kind of stuff, okay? And it's going to be predominantly an Asian crowd. Well, what is the seventh root race? And this is where it might blow your mind, my friends. The seventh root race, there's not a lot that was said about it, but they say once the seventh root race is here, that they will be fully ethereal, which means fully fourth dimensional beings. They're going to be very short, yeah, which we know the Asian community is known to be a bit shorter, but it'll be even shorter than they are now, okay? And they're not going to look like humans we look like now. They're, they're supposed to be pure light beings, they say, like white type beings. Well, my friends, it's the greys. That's right. I've made a video on this before, how they're, they're turning the humans into the greys. The greys are us from the future. They're time travelers, my friends. And this is, we're stuck in a time loop, and history is repeating itself. The greys lost their souls. They lost their divine spark. They couldn't produce anymore. And they were, they're trying to get their souls back, pretty much. It seems like we're stuck in this giant t uh, time loop. And the greys are said to be the archons, or a group of archons, slaves to the reptilians. We know this is a big reptilian takeover. So could it be that the future of the Asian people, if they are the future main ones on Earth, and the Earth is changing, they've all accepted the thing that they wanted you to get. They accepted the nanotechnology. They're being changed to eventually turn into the greys. And that is the seventh root race and that is the process that we see unfolding right now 100 percent, my friends now obviously there's going to be 
a group of people who do not choose that negative timeline. Okay, and the people who choose the organic timeline, who detoxify and get in touch with spirit and all that, we are going to go on a better timeline and ascend organically, okay, and become who we were truly meant to be and escape this matrix altogether. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is Aleister Crowley, and it's very interesting because he's an occultist who came shortly after Helena Blavlatsky, and he said very similar things, okay. And uh, he was in contact with this being named I was, okay? Or you could say AI was, because it was spelled A I W A S S, okay? And this being claimed to be uh, connected to Horus, okay? But end of the day, uh, Crowley admitted uh, in his last days that it was Satan, okay? Or Lucifer. Uh, I believe it was Inky. Uh, related to that whole group, reptilian AI and all that, okay? Uh, anyways, uh, in 1904, I believe, Crowley wrote uh, the Book of the Law. And that was a book channeled by this Iwas entity. And he laid out the aeons that humanity went through. It's kind of like the root races. And he talked about the coming Aeon of Horus, which we are in right now. So, I am going to show you what he said, what was going to take place. He also did say that the previous aeons, it started off as the aeon of Isis, and that's when we had the religions where it had many different gods, whether it be the Sumerians with all the different gods, and then the Greek tales and, and the uh, uh, Egyptian tales, okay, the more pagan type stuff, okay, and then there was the aeon of Osiris, which we just had not too long ago with the monotheism, with Christianity, Islam, under one God, how they did that. And then, once he channeled that that uh, book of the law, that is when he said the Aeon of Horus began in the early 1900s. And that's when all these changes were starting to take place. So let's see what Crowley said. This is a direct quote from him, and I will read it out to you guys. Here it is. Observe for yourselves the decay of the sense of sin, the growth of innocence and irresponsibility, the strange modifications of the reproductive instinct with a tendency to become bisexual or epicene, which also happens to mean androgynous, a.k.a. transsexual, non-binary. The childlike confidence in progress combined with the nightmare fear of catastrophe against which we are yet half unwilling to take precautions. Consider the outcrop of dictatorships only possible when moral growth is in its earliest stages and the prevalence of infantile cults like communism, fascism, pacism, health crazes, occultism in nearly all its forms, religions sentimentalize to the point of practical extinction, a.k.a. the New World Order. Consider the popularity of the cinema, the wireless, the football pools, and guessing competitions, all devices for soothing, fractious infants, no need of purpose in them. Consider sport, the babyish enthusiasms and rages which it excites whole nations disturbed by disputes between boys. Consider war, the atrocities which occur daily and leave us unmoved and heartily worried. We are children. How this new aeon of Horus will develop, how the child will grow up, these are for us to determine. Growing up ourselves in the way of the law of Thelema under the enlightened guidance of the master Theron, Alester Crowley. There you have it, my friends. Very interesting, eh? He even said himself, people are going to start to become bisexual. And uh, pretty much the same thing as Blavlatsky said, uh, you know, going to the trans thing and the uh, having both, you know, he's pretty much saying the same thing. Uh, funny how he knew that, right? It's lining up with all that. Uh, talking about this shift of consciousness happening. I, I, I was reading on forums about uh, other Thelmanites. You know, those are people who've followed his religion. And they're, they were describing the Aeon of Horus. There'd be more of a hive mind mentality. 
uh, which we know they're they're hooking they're setting things up to hook us up to AI, and it's going to be a hive mind. They want a hive mind, and you know obviously the vibration of the Earth is changing and it's going to mimic a kind of a spiritual experience. But they want to destroy that, keep us from true ascension. It's going to be a false ascension. They're going to say you're going to ascend with the technology. Really, you're just getting hooked up to the AI and you're going to become an AI bot. But yes, you're going to be much more advanced because you're going to be merged with technology. But you're going to be completely controlled. And this whole thing was just a big psychological operation, you know. And, you know, Crowley, uh, I think you'd be very proud of what was happening right now. Because uh, his vision, but I shouldn't even say him, he was just a vehicle. More so Inky, Lucifer, whatever you want to call it, the NWO, their vision for society is going exactly how they want it to be. You see the whole uh, movements that are going on, you know. You know, like Crowley really started that whole free love, you know, bringing in, you know, having group things with lots of people doing the business, you know, and and uh, bringing in a lot of stuff like that. And then you saw in the 60s with the hippie movements, which a lot of these people were inspired by Crowley, a lot of these uh, 60s musicians, the Beatles, all of that, they all had Crowley on the cover. And that free love got introduced. And as you could see, as the years went by, society became more and more uh, sexualized, which Crowley was very perverted man and was very much into all that stuff. And other perversions we're not even going to get into, some very disgusting stuff. Uh, I don't even want to talk about it, okay? So we really see all that and what it's built up to, to where we are today. Now we have that flag all over the place with the uh, rainbows on it, right? Isn't that interesting? that it is the chakra system reversed. Take a look. That's right. That's how they want you to be. They want your spiritual chakras on the bottom and the root chakra, which is and sacral, which is the sexual stuff, to be up top. They want it totally inverted. So this great reset could happen in the NWO takeover and uh, this change of who we are. Uh, it's all playing out. So that's why I said I think Crowley would be very pleased that this plan is being executed right now. And, you know, as much as the guy was uh, perverted and stuff like that uh, and put out a lot of bad stuff, uh, I do believe he was channeling this inky entity, and, you know, there are some stuff in his work that is useful and is some good knowledge as well, because, see, they always have to tell you the truth. And I believe inky and the AI, they're behind the Bible and all the religious texts, and yeah, there's a lot of crap in all those texts, but there's also a lot of good stuff too, so I don't want to crap on all of Crowley's work. One could still learn from it which I have learnt a lot from it, uh, because they have to tell you the truth, even some certain spiritual truths. So it's interesting. I'm not a fan of the person he was, but the work is very fascinating at the end of the day, because he's it's pretty much Enki, the Dark One, telling you the truth, as they always do. Uh, but you got to be careful, because there's lies and deceptions mixed in there with it all. But... Uh, if you could see through all that crap and understand the deeper concepts, you will understand what's going on with this reality. So that's why I say I'd never discredit the work of Helena Blavlatsky or Crowley or any of these people who may have been, uh, in our view, evil people, you know, uh, because there is still a lot of stuff you could still learn from it. And that goes with all the evil people that you see today. Yes, they're evil. They've enslaved humanity, but they hold the knowledge. They hold the secrets. If we ever want to defeat them and be on their level, we have to learn those secrets too that they've been hoarding to regain our power. So that's what I've been looking into to present this to you guys, to bring the occult out into the open and understand what is truly happening. They are changing us. Uh, we are in the eon of Horus right now. Uh, then there was the next Aeon, which is the Aeon of Mott that Crowley talked about. And not much was said about the Aeon of Mott, but it was said it would come shortly after the Aeon of Horus. But I believe that's the same as the seventh root race, that we uh, they would merge 
fully with the fourth dimension become the greys. That's what I believe the Aeon of Matt is. And then of course, there will be the other timeline of the people who ascended organically and uh, pretty much escaped this matrix. Okay? So I believe that is what's happening. All right, my friends? So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I blew your guys' minds. Let me know what you thought down below in the comment section. And uh, hey, if you want to see more of my videos, I am on Patreon where there's exclusive content. We got many different classes, the Cent 5D class, uh, the Health class, the Occult class. So the link is down below. And if you'd like to just simply buy old Lionel a coffee uh, for my efforts, that's much appreciated. Your support means everything to me. And of course, I will send you exclusive videos to your email if you do so. So the link to that is down below as well. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So. You guys have a good one. Subscribe, and uh, until next time, Lionel, signing off.